Something very interesting is happening when it comes to the Ukraine situation. On the one hand, Zelensky is hanging out with Joe Biden this week. On the other hand, Rishi Sunak has been forced to review the Ukraine funding and potentially cutting it. And we ask, it is all a distraction. Okay, welcome to the debate that literally has no nuance in it. <laughs> Everybody is going gone crazy on all sides and nobody wants to actually uh, think about uh, the consequences and nobody wants to think about what's actually going on. Nobody really knows exactly what, what is the goal, what is the objective from all sides. Whether it's Kremlin, whether it's Ukraine, whether it's NATO, whether it's just the White House or the FCO in London. Nobody actually knows uh, what the narrative really is. Right now we're having a situation where Rishi Sunak has been forced to call for a review on the spending that we are having on Ukraine, because of course, on the cost of living crisis, we have all these problems and everything else. We don't literally have any money left. And of course, he's been forced to do that. Now, whether he will actually cut it or not, that's a whole different point. But the fact that he's even considering to cut the funding. But it, again, the line from Downing Street is, well, well, don't worry, don't worry, Zelensky, if, if, we, if we cut it, we're still going to be um, providing support in some way. This is just to make sure that we find the most efficient uh, and effective uh, solution for you. This is going to be quite interesting because um, while we have Zelensky hanging out with Joe Biden this week in the US, and of course we know that uh, the Russian um, army are all over the place anyway, this is the problem because we had a white horse, white horse source uh, <laughs> saying that, well, we, we can't just do the Goldman Sachs dashboard, for those who obviously are familiar with that concept, we have to basically go with instinct um, rather than just structure. They said that uh, Rishi Sunak needed to channel his inner Boris. <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> see how that's going to go. But yesterday, a Downing Street spokesman rejected the comparison, but confirmed that military spending was being reviewed. They said that the prime minister is staying closely across the detail of developments in Ukraine, and the impact of UK and international support to ensure we are delivering the best possible assistance. So this is like all over the place. In terms of the media narrative, we're not really sure exactly who's calling the shot. We, we knew that until now, it was Pentagon. Pentagon and the State Department in America running the show. But on the other hand, when you had Boris Johnson as Prime Minister, when it came to the PR front of this whole conflict, it was London. It was Boris Johnson and the Foreign Office running the show. But ever since uh, Boris has left, it's not really been the same. We, we, can't, we don't really see Rishi Sunak being as successful when it comes to shaking hands with Zelensky or walking around uh, Kiev or all the other places. Um, which makes me, again, makes you think, is this going to be one of the situations where they're going to wait and see the consequences on what's going on in Iran because of the uprising? And the support that Iran is giving to Russia, and Iran is getting weaker, Russia is getting weaker, we know that. And Ukraine, if it didn't have the funding from the West, Ukraine will be extremely weak as well. So this is basically a game where, unfortunately, that the main players involved, they would have been equally weak, and they would have been all over the place. And if it weren't for the globalists getting involved with it, initially China from the other side, and now the NATO from this side, who is actually running the show and what is the interest? Because of course we have the, the weapon manufacturers and the lobby, intelligence lobby, they're loving it. They're making all these contracts, they're making all the money. So it's in their interest for the conflict to continue. But in terms of ordinary people, what's gonna happen there? And that's the main question that we have been discussing, especially when it comes to uh, the relationship between Iran and Russia. And we will continue to keep you guys up to date. Subscribe to the channel, I'm Mario Tusi and we, are the media.